Welcome to Discovering Destiny. My name is Pastor Dan Sherstead, and it is my honor once again this week to be with you here on the Cross TV network. And uh, so I want to just encourage you. I got a real great word of hope and encouragement and strength for you today. I believe that the word that the Holy Spirit has laid upon my heart is going to bring strength and courage, a fresh word of hope. It's going to impart strength to you. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what kind of circumstances are surrounding you. I serve a God who's big, strong, powerful, and His Word conquers everything. His Word causes everything to come to pass. Once God has said it, it's going to happen. Once He has declared it, He does whatever He's got to do to make sure His Word comes to pass because He's a God who does not lie, and He's a God who has great integrity, and uh, he loves to keep his word in your life. So as we start this broadcast today, let me just uh, open up with a word of prayer. I want to encourage you to open up your heart. I know a number of you watching are quite busy. I want to thank you for just taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, spend this next 25 minutes or so with me today here on Discovering Destiny. I promise you it'll be well worth your time. I promise you that by the power of God's grace and Holy Spirit that this broadcast is going to add value to your life for the glory of God. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for these precious, precious, wonderful people that are watching this broadcast today. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to give them ears to hear and eyes to see what you are trying to communicate to them through this broadcast today. I thank you for a fresh spirit of wisdom and revelation concerning the knowledge of God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for just speaking words of life in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for that in Jesus' name. Listen, we call this show Discovering Destiny. And I've been talking for the last several weeks about uh, in, in such a way that something will awaken on the inside of you. And, uh, and so I, that's my heart. That's my prayer that this broadcast will awaken, even today, will awaken the destiny that's on the inside of you. As I say every week, and I'm going to continue to say, because people have this misconception that they can just create their own destiny. And the reality is God has a destiny, has a future, has a plan already created for you, and it's our responsibility to yield to the person and the presence and the power of the leading of the Holy Spirit on the inside of each and every one of us here today. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior today, I just want to invite you. It's as simple as this. It's asking him to come by virtue of, of what he did upon the cross. He has made a way back to heaven for you to be in the presence of God, your Father. And so all you've got to do is believe in what Jesus did upon the cross. That's why this is called the cross network, the T Cross TV network. It's all about the work of the cross that has provided a way for you to get back into the presence of God the Father, to live, if you will please, in the garden once again, and to have fellowship with him and experience his manifest, tangible, anointed presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. The Bible says in his presence is absolute life-changing peace that literally can heal your very mind. In his presence is, listen, is the very righteousness of Jesus himself that he literally imputes to you by virtue and the, by power, by virtue of the cross as you believe in that. So listen, the Bible says that the kingdom of God comes like this, that righteousness, joy, and peace is in the Holy Spirit, and that is the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink or it's not natural things, or that you cannot, cannot, you cannot attain the kingdom of God by rules and regulations in a particular religious system. And I just think that that's huge for us to really grab a hold of because if, if we can attain some kind of, um, you know, get to heaven and all of the kingdom of God by just our own personal good works, uh, then what Jesus did upon the cross was absolutely worthless and a waste of time. But the reality is, that we need his righteousness. 
We need his faith, his joy, his peace. And the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not natural things. It's not, or you cannot get there by natural ways. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. And so when we receive the Holy Spirit, that's why the person and the power, that's why I'm so huge about, I'm always talking, whether it's on camera, whether it's in a service, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one to somebody, I'm always, everything that, that, I, that I speak about always revolves around the person of the Holy Spirit because without you having a real relationship with Him, you cannot access anything that's in Jesus the Son. You cannot access anything that's in God the Father. And I've said it this way before, and I just want to say it again today on this broadcast, that uh, God, your Father in heaven, He, we serve, yes, we have one God, but He manifests Himself in three different ways. And God the Father, uh, He is the one who releases the creative thoughts. And God the Son is the one who speaks out. John chapter 1, verse 1 says that Jesus is the spoken word of God the Father, and, uh, and the spoken word of God the Father is Jesus in manifest form. And so Jesus speaks out the word that he hears, he gets from the Father, the creative word, but that creative word is relayed to him through the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus in his earthly ministry uh, for three and a half years from his virgin birth, when the Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary. Come on now. It says that even then he was conceived by the power and presence and glory of the Holy Spirit. So from his very birth to his childhood, to his ministry, to his death, to ascending up into heaven, even the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, even he offered up his blood uh, in the heavenly courts, in the heavenly holy of holies by the Holy Spirit. And so it's all by the Holy Spirit. So God the Father is the one who releases the creative thought. Jesus is the one who speaks out those thoughts. But it's the Holy Spirit who is the executive agent of the triune God uh, who literally executes, come on, those thoughts that have been spoken. And so he is the, the only one. God, the, Jesus the Son is not on the earth today. God the Father is not on the earth today. But God the Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of Jesus and the Spirit of the Father, who has been poured out upon all flesh on, during the uh, day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. It says that he is the executive agent here on the earth. And so I, I always like to say this, if we as Christians or we as churches, local churches have literally relegated at best, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit to some back room and we don't allow his presence or his manifestation of his gifts to flow in front of people, how in the world is he ever going to receive glory for what he does for people? And at worst, the Holy Spirit has been kicked to the streets, and he's not even allowed <clears throat> in churches. He's not even, he's not even talked about anymore. And, the, and, the, and the, the reality is when we limit the Holy Spirit or, or don't recognize or appreciate or embrace who he really is. It's him that helps us to access. It's through his power and presence that we access all of the promises. The Bible says all the promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And we can't access the love or the glory of God the Father unless it's all through the person of the Holy Spirit. So it's so very important that we had this incredible relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit because he is going to lead and guide and direct us, listen now, into the very future that God has for us. Um, so last week I, I read uh, a verse out of Psalm 37, and I just want to read that again, and then I'm going to take a step back into thir Psalm 37 and, and uh, read some verses that go along with that. But I read last week at the, as we ended the broadcast the steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord uh, when he delights his way and he busies himself. God busies himself with your every step. Though you may fall, you will not be utterly cast down for the Lord will grab a hold of you and support you and uphold you. Man, that's powerful. That's good news right there. That should encourage you. But no matter how many times, come on now, as long as our heart is right and we live in a, in a spirit of repentance. Every day we should have like this attitude of repentance on the inside of us that we just live with that, 
what, that I'm going to change my ways, my way of thinking, my attitudes, my actions, my thinking. I'm going to allow the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to transform me into the very image of God the Son, right? And uh, so that I can be more like Him every day. But you know what? All of us, including myself, we are not there. And so we make mistakes and we fall short. And um, here's where the grace of God comes in. The grace of God comes and picks us up. And so he says, even though a righteous man shall utterly fall and slip seven times, the right hand of the Lord shall be there to uphold him and to strengthen him. And the reason is, is because God has this plan for your life. Come on now. He said that he's blessed you with his plan and he's busy himself with the ordering of your steps. He's ordered up some great things for you. Yes, sir. Let me say that again. He has ordered up some wonderful things for your life. He has ordered up some great things for your future. He's ordered up a great destiny for your life. I shared a couple of weeks ago how God brought me from um, 35 years ago when he gave me an open vision and a promise. And today it is taking place in almost every single day now in my life. I'm telling you something is exploding. Another favor comes. Another connection comes. Another opportunity comes. The favor of God. When you step into the, the fullness of that which God has de declared over your life, things begin to just shift and change and come on now because he's already ordered it if God has ordered it up for you come on now it's like uh, it's coming your way it's like when the server comes to the table at the restaurant and he takes your order and you order that up right the server takes it to the kitchen and gives it to the chef the chef cooks up your order and then the order is brought to you Come on, and so God says, listen, I have gone ahead of you, and I have pre-ordered. Come on now. He has pre-ordered nothing but good things for you, nothing but health for you, nothing but blessing for you, nothing but righteousness for you, nothing but joy for you, nothing but peace for you. He's pre-ordered all of this, and as we stand in Christ, and Christ is in us, and we begin to understand that, we can release faith and trust in the Word of God and began to discover what he has already pre-ordered for us. Come on, somebody. That's a word for somebody right there. Because you're waiting, you're like, oh, I wonder if I can just talk the Lord into, no, no. He's already pre-ordered your life. And so he says, I need you to trust me. I need you to lean on me. That's what it says here in verse 2 of chapter 37. Trust in me, lean on me, rely on me, be confident in me, because I've already pre-ordered all of this up, and it's nothing but good. And so I, I uh, quoted, I think I believe I quoted last week or a couple of weeks ago, uh, Psalm 29, verse 11, it says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, thoughts and plans to bring a great welfare to your life, to bring peace and not for evil, and to bring and to cause the expected end or the final outcome of your life to be full of hope, expectation, and blessing. Oh, my goodness, that's awesome. And so as we yield to the person of the Holy Spirit and we allow him to lead and guide and to direct us, how do we do that? By trusting in him, by leaning upon him, by being confident in him that he's already pre-ordered this up for your life, and that he's, he says, I know, I know you, I know how you were formed in your mother's womb. I formed you with a, in a particularly uh, intricate way with all different kinds of gifts and talents and callings and uh, anointings and graces on your life with a particular certain kind of personality and a certain kind of temperament. And he said, I put all of that, I knit it all together in a very special way. And he says, I have a special life for you so that when you step into that, you know, the reality is, you know, they've done several surveys and uh, most people, unfortunately, I mean, it is a high percentage of most people on the planet live lives that are incredibly frustrated and no fulfillment whatsoever, no joy whatsoever. They, they live lives and live in jobs that they hate. Did you know that? They've done multiple uh, scientific studies and have come to find out that most people on the planet today are absolutely living and doing uh, jobs that they absolutely hate. Because, well, you know why they hate them? Because they're not called to do that. They're just doing something to survive, and they're not 
literally have not discovered what they are destined to do that's related to how God has created them to do that because that's where the fulfillment comes. That's where the joy comes. That's where the hope comes. That's where the constant faith and confidence in God. And so it's so important that we tap into that. And that's what this broadcast is all about. I've come to you today to encourage you, to strengthen you, and uh, possibly even stir you up on the inside to get you to the place where you don't want to live your life in a life of mediocrity. You want to live, come on, most of the world is doing that. You don't even need the Holy Spirit to do that. You don't need even the Word of God to do that. You don't even need God. There's a whole lot of people that are living lives that are just mediocre, and uh, and they, they don't they're not accessing or talking to God or have any relationship with God at all. So you don't even need God to live that way. But if you want to live a life of excellence, if you want to live a life that's absolutely fulfilling and brings great joy on a daily basis, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. You're going to need Him to lead God and direct you every single day of the way. And so when He says, listen. Watch this. Here's the next sentence in verse 3 of chapter 37. So surely you will dwell in the land and in the good land and feed surely on his faithfulness and truly you shall be fed. So I just want to stop right there and just talk a little bit about that. Here's, here's the key. You got to feed on his faithfulness. He's a faithful God. His word is faithful. Uh, he is a God who keeps his covenant. Let me read a, 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 a powerful verse out of the, uh, out of the book of uh, uh, Hebrews here that the, I believe the Holy Spirit is just quickening for you. It says this in um, Hebrews chapter 6 and uh, verse 18. It says, This was so that by two unchangeable things, number one, his promise and his oath, number two, in which it is impossible for God to, ever to prove false or deceive us, who have fled to him for refuge, that we might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope that's appointed for us and set before us. Oh my goodness, that verse right there. And I'll, I'll read out of the Amplified Bible. I love the Amplified Bible. Let me just, just say this in case you're reading out of another translation. But, you know, I, I, I've talked to different uh, uh, Hebrew and Greek scholars, and they, they've all agreed that the Amplified Bible is the most accurate when it comes to the original language. So I, just, I know it can be a little bit more wordy and everything, but I'm telling you, the, the uh, Greek language is so much more complicated than the English language, and it takes a lot of English words to even communicate properly one Greek word. And so, uh, look at this. This is, this is powerful. Let me just stop and make a few comments here. We're talking about feeding on his faithfulness. If you're going to be a person who consistently is going to be in pursuit uh, uh, and being, having the ability to have confidence in the Lord, uh, if your trust level uh, or your confidence level uh, is not high in the Lord, you might want to tr check your trust level. See, to have confidence in God means you got to be able to trust somebody. Just, uh, just relate that to uh, um, any kind of earthly relationship you may have. If you have tr strong confidence in a particular person that you're in relationship with, it's because you trust them. And if you don't really trust them, if you find yourself saying, well, you know what, I don't really trust that person. Well, here's the reality. You, have, you can't have, you have very little, if any, confidence in that kind of person because you don't know if they can keep their word or not. But God says, listen, I always keep my word. I always cause my promises to come to pass. Not one word. There's over 3,000 promises in the Bible. And the word of God says that he says that God has said yes to all 3,000 promises. And then we say amen. That word amen just simply means let it be, so be it, let it happen in my life. And so when the word of God says that all the promises are yes and amen, Number one, realize, man, there's 3,000. I don't care what you're going through. There's a promise in the Bible that relates to the situation and the particular circumstance that you're experiencing in your life right now. And as you search out the Word of God, and you know what? There are absolute incredible um, resources that you can get at a bookstore to help you with those promises. You can go online, and you can Google a word, 
and it'll, it'll come up with all the verses that have that, that word or in particular all the promises that have that situation in it. So man, we got so many resources. So uh, we have nearly no excuse for finding a promise in the Bible that we can stand and allow the Holy Spirit to speak into our lives. So he says, first of all, to be able to, to fulfill or to discover that which I have already created for you, he says this pre-ordered plan and future, come on now, these steps that I have pre-ordered for you, he said you're going to have to be, have confidence in me, therefore you're going to have to be able to trust me. And to be able to trust me, you're going to have to be able to feed on my faithfulness. Feed on it. Come on now. Over. Just eat it over and over. Meditate on it. The, this is spiritual food. The Word of God is like spiritual food every day. You've got to feed on it every day and feed on His faithfulness. Remind yourself what He's done for you in the past. Uh, rehearse that in your heart and in your mind. Meditate on the promises of God. Feed on the promises. Listen to other testimonies of people that have gone on before you and, and, and experienced the answer to what you're going through. God might not do it exactly the same way that they did it in their life, but he is going to do it for you because what he did for one, he can do for you because uh, God is no respecter of persons. The Bible is very, very, very clear about that. And even when you have forgotten uh, your prayer and your petition, God has not forgotten that. He might not answer it exactly when you want him to answer it, but he will. When you lift up a petition in faith, God will respond to that petition uh, in his heavenly court system. So we got to feed on his faithfulness. And so he says here that I between these two unchangeable things. Number one, my promise. When I give a promise, nothing changes it. And then I, I, I give an oath, or I, I make, a, I swear on myself and on my own word that what I said or promised you that I would do, I will do it. So I give you a promise, and this is what I'm going to do for you, and then I give you my word to back up my promise and I never break my word. He's a God of absolute integrity. And so he says, these two never change, these two things. He said, I'm we're talking about feeding on his faithfulness in the process, okay? And he's saying here that these two unchangeable things, the promise and then the word that I give or my oath that I swear to back up my word, he says, it is impossible it is impossible. Somebody once said, uh, and you, maybe you've heard this before, that is there anything impossible to God? Yes, there is. He just says right here, it's impossible for God to lie. So there are some things that are literally impossible for God to do. So he says it's impossible for God to be proven to ever prove to be false. So God never it's impossible for him to break his word. It's impossible for him to deceive you. So there you go. So there are things that God will never do that he cannot do. It's not in his very nature. He is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of that. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. Listen, we who embrace this thing called Christianity are the only people on the planet who have a Lord and a Savior who is truth himself. Truth is just not simply a precept. Truth is not just simply a concept. It's not just a form of philosophy. Truth is actually a person. His name is Jesus the Christ. Uh, and so the person, Jesus the Christ, who is truth himself, says here, it is impossible for me to lie. It's impossible for me to ever deceive you. Some of you uh, have been waiting multiple years uh, for a promise to take place. I said last week on the broadcast, man, I wait, I've been waiting 35 years, and it's just now happening. Uh, come on now, but you just got to stand on the Word of God and keep on standing on the Word of God. And when you get tired of standing, you stand up on the Word of God again because God is not mocked. He, you, whatever he says, come on now, you're going to reap the blessing of that because he's watching. He's literally himself watching over his own personal word and to make sure that it takes place. So he says, it's impossible for me to ever say anything false. It's impossible for me to ever deceive you. And he says that 
we who have fled to him, come on now, for refuge and strength. So I want to encourage you. That's how you find. If, you, if you're not, if you're not, don't know this Savior that I'm talking about, I want to encourage you. All you got to do is just say, Jesus, please, I, I, I come into my heart. I believe you, and I believe what you did upon the cross of Calvary. I believe that you have forgiven me of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I ask you, Lord God, I believe that you were resurrected from the dead. And I believe, Lord God, that you are my personal Lord and Savior. And I just, and I just confess that with my mind. It's as simple as that. Listen, we're running out of time. Only got another minute for left in this broadcast. If you prayed that prayer or something similar to it, it's just simple. It's about your heart. It isn't about the exact words. I want you to go to my website or call that number on the, on the, on the screen and let us know what the Lord is doing in your life. I want to thank you. Come on now. For tuning in here, go to danschurchedministries.com and uh, check us out. Um, I want to invite you to pray about being a partner with us. And you can find more information about that at our website. And uh, you, you can contact me uh, at the website kind of thing. And uh, we're getting ready to go to Mexico in a few weeks, going to Liberia, West Africa after that, going to some other nations after that, just going all over the world preaching the gospel. I need some partners. Can't do a vision without people and finances. But God's raising them up. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want you to remember now, Jesus loves you. And I love you too. God bless you.